is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2020 toyota highlander courtesy of hanover toyota in hanover pa and so for the 2020 model year this one has been completely redesigned when you add to that toyota reliability this is definitely a sure pick and the first thing i noticed when i got in this one the seats are ridiculously comfortable and i've always we said this in my reviews Lexus has the very most comfortable seats well with Toyota making Lexus of course I kind of always wondered why weren't the Toyota seats equally as comfortable as Lexus and I think Toyota may have just done that with the new Highlander so what do you say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as expected there are a few different trim levels for the 2020 highlander first one being the l starting at thirty-four thousand six hundred dollars then you have the le for thirty-six thousand eight hundred dollars xle for thirty-nine thousand six hundred limited starting at forty-three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars and lastly the platinum starting at forty-six thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars and so by the way that was pricing for the front wheel drive setup if you wanted to add all-wheel drive simply add sixteen hundred dollars to any of those prices there and so regardless of trim level though that you go with the power plant on the Highlander will be the same powering this beast is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 295 horsepower at 6600 rpm 263 pound-feet of torque available at 4700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic giving you zero to 60 approximately 7.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 29 on the highway for the front wheel drive 20 in the city 27 on the highway for the all-wheel drive either way taking regular unleaded fuel aka 87 octane you do not have to fill up with the super expensive 93 octane in this one and so at this point somebody's going to ask isn't there a hybrid version of the new highlander there will be there isn't yet there is going to be probably within the next few months I would imagine but as of now that hybrid trim level is not out yet neither are the numbers or specs or any of that information so that will be saved for a separate video but so now before we do any kind of accelerations in the new 2020 Highlander first I want to mention there are a few different driving modes that actually come standard on this one as well that button is located just behind the shifter but that's gonna give you eco normal and sport and so essentially what those drive modes are gonna do I just put it in sport mode it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to adjust the shift point so with sport mode at least it's going to give you more power on demand it will also adjust the throttle sensitivity and the steering sensitivity as well and so what do you guys say let's do a quick little acceleration here in this one and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Toyota Highlander here up to speed all right you guys and a little rolling start here we go Yep, that'll work. Certainly no issues with merging onto the highway. Naturally aspirated V6 with nearly 300 horsepower. Even in the SUV, you're definitely not gonna have any issues with acceleration. With a very linear acceleration as well. And that's one of the things I love about NA engines as opposed to turbocharged engines, which a lot of manufacturers are going with these days is you don't have that random burst of power with a little delay at the beginning. You just have a very smooth linear acceleration, which I happen to love. So. Well done Toyota for that acceleration, that was beautiful. But so as always to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front you will find 13.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.3 inch rear discs as well. As far as the braking feel goes, as we come up to this red light here, it is perfectly fine, no brake pedal delay. It's not squishy or anything like that. So braking feel is just fine for me. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit. Up front you will get an independent McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back independent multi-link rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar as far as ride quality goes ride quality has been absolutely brilliant so far in this test drive today is definitely soaking up pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely probably a good bit more so than a lot of other three row SUVs that I've tested lately. So ride quality is definitely on point in the new Highlander. Well done Toyota once again. As far as cabin noise goes, it's been perfectly fine for me. You guys can probably tell there isn't a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin, even just cruising at 50 miles per hour here. Typically you will get some wind noise, but I feel like Toyota has done a very good job with that with the Highlander. So once again, 
Very well done. As far as steering feel goes, it is a little bit heavier weight in the sport driving mode, but in normal driving mode that I'm at right now, it's kind of loosey goosey, but in the end, that's pretty much what you would expect in a three row SUV. So all in all, steering feel is just fine. Perhaps the one thing I would change with the Highlander at least is the steering wheel itself. The grips are very tiny it's a very thin steering wheel i guess you could describe it as and again that's not a horrible thing it's just something that i prefer a little bit thicker grips when it comes to steering wheel it gives you a little better feel of control over the vehicle but the steering wheel grips are pretty tiny for the most part here in the highlander but it's not a bad thing i'm sure i would get used to it but they are much thinner grips than most other suvs out there right now so i did want to mention that but one additional thing as we are pulling up to the park where we're about to do our exterior shots here of the new highlander I did want to mention if you were to go off road in the 2020 highlander there are actually some off-road drive modes as well and those drive modes are located just behind the other drive mode buttons all of it located just behind the shifter but that's going to include mud sand normal and rock and dirt and so those modes are essentially going to adjust traction control and so it's going to provide you with the most optimum grip in different situations so you don't end up stuck in the mud or the snow or whatever the case so and by the way there is a snow driving mode just to the right of those driving modes so there's like three different sections you can adjust different terrain settings and traction control settings so that's kind of cool there is yes there is a snow mode on the 2020 highlander I always have to mention that especially living in pennsylvania we quite often do get snow so that is definitely a very big plus in my book as well then when it comes to visibility i can actually see pretty decently out the back usually the boxier the shape that you go with with suvs the better visibility you're going to get so it's not maybe quite as good as let's say the honda pilot but it is definitely plenty good enough for you to see out the back so no issues for me overall there did want to also mention to go along with that rain sensing windshield wipers will come standard on the platinum trim level and to go along with that also on the platinum trim level a head-up display projecting your speed as well as the speed limit and some safety settings onto the windshield help you better keep your eyes on the road one less thing you have to worry about so you can better enjoy the drive in the new 2020 toyota highlander but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this all new completely redesigned 2020 toyota highlander all right, here she is, you guys, the new 2020 Toyota Highlander finished in Blizzard Pearl. Very nice looking color on this one. Let's go ahead and start up front here. Front grille is actually gonna differ slightly amongst the trim levels. You will get a material black with a silver perimeter if you were to go with the LLE or XLE trim levels gloss black with a chrome perimeter if you were to go with the limited or the platinum trim levels and there is actually some silver accenting on the lower portion of the front bumper again if you were to go with the platinum trim level only but to the sides led headlights will come standard across the board with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out those headlights will turn on automatically for you there led fog lights coming standard with the le trim level and up along with led daytime running lights again le trim level and up high output led fog lights coming standard standard with the limited and the platinum trim levels and you will actually get an adaptive front lighting system if you were to go with the platinum trim level of this one. So the making our way to the side of this one XLE trim level and up is going to give you roof rails up top there. Rear privacy glass coming standard on all trim levels. You will also find chrome belt line molding for all trim levels there as well. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels. They will come heated. That comes standard with integrated turd signals again coming standard across the board one of the best parts about the new 2020 Toyota Highlander though you guys is there is no black cladding found on the side skirts on this one with just about every other SUV in its category right now you will find that black cladding located on the side skirts which really takes away from the elegant look of any SUV in my opinion so I do love that Toyota eliminated the black cladding and made it body colored it looks so much better in my personal opinion at least but let me know in the comments section what you think of it. But anyways, let's take a look at the wheel setup. 18-inch alloy wheels coming standard with the LLE and XLE trim levels. 20-inch alloy wheels coming standard with the Limited and the Platinum. And I don't think I mentioned it yet today. We actually have the XLE trim level here. So you are looking at those 18-inch alloy wheels. Let me get our way to the back. Shark fin antenna up top just below that. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light for all trim levels. Just below that, rear window wiper. And yet another thing Toyota does very well on 
just about all of their vehicles. LED taillights coming standard across the board, so a little better visibility, less likely to get rear-ended, that's always a good thing. When it comes to that rear bumper, it's actually gonna differ slightly once again amongst the trim levels. Black rear bumper is gonna come with the L, L, E, and X, L, E. That's what you're currently looking at right now. You will get a dark gray metallic finish to that rear bumper if you were to go with the Limited, and a standard gray metallic finish with the Platinum, but just below it all, I think you guys know what we have to do next. There is a single Single exhaust outlet. So here it is, you guys. This is the new 2020 Toyota Highlander exhaust clip. you guys and so now since we are around back of the 2020 Highlander there are a few different ways to go about opening that rear lift gate there is a button on the key fob that is probably the simplest way there's also a button by the driver's side left knee if you were in the driver's seat and there's actually a button just above the license plate on the lift gate itself as well and I did want to mention with the LE trim level and up it is a power lift gate so it will open up automatically for you but I will say having said that it is one of the slowest opening lift gates I've ever experienced so you do have to wait a little bit for it to actually open up but I did want to mention that but it is power lift gate for the LE trim level and up so that's always cool but once opened up you will find six cargo area tie down hooks there's also some grocery hooks back there as well there is a rear cargo cover if you go with the limited or platinum trim levels and you will find some in-floor storage along with some tools to switch out the wheel and tire combination if you were to get a flat but there is some in-floor storage back there so that's definitely a plus as well but now let's take a look at the cargo capacity here behind that third row it is going to come in at an even 16 cubic feet which is identical to the 2020 honda pilot by the way it is an even 16 cubic feet whichever setup that you go with so that's kind of cool behind the second row with that third row folded it comes in at 48.4 cubic feet it is pretty simple folding down that third row. You just have that little string seatbelt looking thing. You just pull that and then fold down the third row. It's very simple to use, but 48.4 cubic feet behind that second row. With all rows folded, there is a 60-40 split, of course, that comes in at 84.3 cubic feet, which, by the way, beats the Honda Pilot by just a little bit. Honda Pilot gives you 83.9 cubic feet. So 84.3 cubic feet is definitely a good bit of space back there. Not quite as much as the Kia Telluride coming in at an even 87, but still all three of those SUVs, they're pretty darn similar at that point. So definitely a ton of space behind the first row. All right, and so now making our way to the rear legroom, third row legroom comes in at 27.7 inches, which I gotta admit isn't a whole lot, quite honestly. For reference, I'll give this a shot. I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. So quite honestly, third row is going to be better left for small children. And the plus side of being in that third row, you do have rear ventilation that hits the third row as well. That's going to be found on the, the roof or the ceiling of this Highlander. So that's definitely a plus, keeping them comfortable. Making our way to the second row, rear legroom comes in at 41 inches even. So this is definitely where you're going to want to put adults if you have any rear passengers. Six feet tall again. This is how much space I had back there. Once again, rear ventilation can be found for that row as well. And I did want to mention when it comes to bench seating versus captain's chairs, you will get eight passenger bench seating with the L and LE trim levels. However, you will get eight passenger seating with the bench seat coming with the L, LE, and XLE trim levels. XLE really can go either way. So this particular trim that we have today, we could have had it either set up, but seven passenger seating with captain's chairs can come with the XLE or of course the limited and platinum it comes standard with but second row sunshades coming with the xle trim level and up and this is the big one for me at least this is something that toyota definitely did very well a lot of times with the rear window sunshades you have to go with the very top trim level of just about every other manufacturer out there but with the Toyota Highlander, you can get it on the XLE, the Limited, and the Platinum. That is definitely a plus. Toyota did well with that. Heated second row seats coming standard with the Platinum trim level only. And you can find some USB charging ports for those rear passengers to stay connected as well back there. But now making our way to the front seats, cloth seating is going to come with the L and LE trim levels. Softex upholstery coming with the XLE. That is, of course, what we have today. And by the way, as I said at the beginning of the video, these are some of the most comfortable 
comfortable front seats that I've been in, really besides Lexus. Lexus is still my favorite, especially the F Sport seats. Those are the most comfortable and they're bolstered a little bit thicker on the side bolsters, but you really do sink into these seats. These are extremely comfortable seats. Definitely a very nice pick for a long road trip. So I did want to mention that because more than likely the Highlander will be going on many road trips for many families, but leather surfaces coming standard with the limited and platinum trim levels. And so the soft text upholstery, it's kind of like a leather right? if you wanted to think of it that way. You will find an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat with the L and LE trim levels. You will get a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar with the XLE trim level. And that includes a four-way power passenger seat as well. And you can find heated and ventilated front seats with the limited and the platinum. And I will say we do have heated front seats here on the XLE trim level as well. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. Once again, the grips are very thin, but it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the LE trim level and up, and it will come heated for the limited and the platinum trim levels in case you wanted that feature. But make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have a Toyota Highlander specific key. You can find that on one side of the key. And when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch there. But it is actually all keyless entry across the board. So simply just leave the key in your pocket if you wanted to. Put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is again, standard across the board, located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, gauges will do a full sweep. Tachometers all the way on your left, speedometers on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center. And so to control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there and that's going to give you a ton of different things like safety features how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature there's when you need your next oil change time of the day there's honestly a ton of different things you could check out up there including your driving modes of course as well then make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof coming with the xle and limited trim levels however you will get a panoramic moonroof going all the way into the back seats if you were to go with the platinum trim level only overhead sunglass holder coming standard for all trim levels i did want to mention in addition to that overhead sunglass holder you do have a rear conversation mirror toyota calls it meaning it's kind of like the school bus mirror where you can spy on the kids in the back seat make sure they're behaving so that's kind of cool auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls coming standard with the xle trim level and up if i were to sum up the trim levels i would say the xle is really the sweet spot that's where most of the features start to kick in like these home link controls for up to three different garage doors here i always love that feature because the alternative is the garage door opener device that clips on your sun visor and sometimes can rattle at highway speed, so I don't like the rattling, so I do like the home light controls. Tri-zone climate control coming standard for all trim levels, so driver, passenger, and the rear passengers controlled by the second row there can set their own temperatures, it's very nice. Wireless phone charger coming standard once again with the XLE trim level and up. Ambient interior lighting coming standard with the limited and platinum trim levels. Did wanna also mention there is a driver easy speak voice projection system that it will come standard on all trim levels as well. And so that's kind of like the school bus thing. Once again, you can project your voice into the rear seats. It's always nice, but overall there is a ton of little storage areas I wanted to mention as well. For instance, on the driver and passenger your side doors a lot of times you won't get storage there but you actually do in the highlander here also just above the passenger side glove box you have another little storage area that's kind of divvied in so things don't pop out of it that's definitely nice as well just underneath the climate control in front of the shifter here, yet another storage area. And so actually I think what Toyota intended for that storage area is you can feed the USB cable up through that storage area and then set your phone right there. So it kind of keeps the wires out of the way. So well done Toyota for thinking of that. Even more storage just below that, yet another area you could probably set yourself in if you wanted to. You'll have dual cup holders just to the right of the shifter, electro mechanical parking brake just behind that. Of course, all your drive mode, buttons and then if you're wondering where the wireless phone charger actually is it is underneath the center armrest actually that is uh out of the way i guess you could say and you can actually fold that up and that is how you're going to get to all the cargo area which is insanely deep within this center armrest there's a tray area there as well 12 volt power outlet 
and really a just ton, ton, ton of space in there. And yet another really subtle interior touch I really loved on the Highlander is there are aluminum sill plates when you first open the door, but when you open the door, there is actually LED illumination on those aluminum sill plates as well. So I don't think I've ever seen it done that way. I've seen the sill plates illuminated themselves, but not actually a light projected onto this sill plate. So I don't know, it's kind of different. I kind of like it there, but anyways. So overall interior is definitely finished quite nicely and there's a ton of interior color options I should mention as well. Though we have the basic black today, there is really a good bit of color options you can go with with the interior, which I absolutely love. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard with the LLE, XLE and limited, essentially all trim levels, but the platinum. Platinum trim level is actually gonna give you a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display up front. Of course, that is not what you were looking at right now, but either way, either setup that you go with, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Yes, for all trim levels, even the bottom trim level gets Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's always a big one for me because that gives you free navigation as long as you have a smartphone. Simply hook your smartphone up to the Highlander. You have that navigation displayed up there as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. And there's a couple other compatible apps, of course, as well. If you wanted factory navigation system, if you maybe live way up in the mountains where there's no phone service whatsoever you can get that with the limited and platinum trim levels and of course you can check out your radio settings up on that screen and by the way when it comes to the sound system six speakers will come with the l l e and xle trim levels however there is an 11 speaker jbl sound system that comes standard with the limited and the platinum the sound system comes with the subwoofer and external amp and 1100 watts. That is a ridiculous amount of wattage that you typically only see in luxury vehicles like Mercedes-Benz or probably the Bowers and Wilkins sound system that is thrown in a bunch of Volvos. So usually luxury manufacturers include that type of wattage, but we actually do have that sound system as an option here today on our XLE. So what do you say? Let's just go ahead and turn on the radio here, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Definitely Clarity, I would say, is the most on point with that sound system. Clarity is crystal clear, really with 1100 watts, that's to be expected. Decent amount of bass, definitely more than enough bass for what you would expect in a three row SUV, but Clarity, 100% on point with that one. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that display screen at least is, when you do put the Highlander in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera standard across the board. Did want to also mention with the platinum trim level, you will get not only a 360 degree camera, a bird's eye view, letting you know what is all around you for perfect parking, but you will actually also get a digital rear view mirror. And so what that digital rear view mirror is, is it will display what is behind you within the rear view mirror. That camera is located on the outside of the vehicle. This is always a cool feature, especially if you're going on long road trips and you have the back completely piled up with all kinds of luggage to the ceiling to the point where you can't see out of that rear view mirror but with the digital rear view mirror the cameras on the outside of the vehicle you can still see what's behind you therefore so it kind of helps you back up and things like that but anyways it's platinum trim level and up and that is going to lead us into safety it's so a let me first start by mentioning the toyota highlander in 2019 was an iihs top safety pick so i would imagine it would be at least that in 2020 Front side, side curtain airbags will come standard. In addition to that, a driver's side knee airbag. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, and best part, all trim levels will actually give you Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, which includes things like a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, automatic high beams, dynamic radar cruise control, road sign assist, and cyclist detection. Again, coming standard across the board. That is definitely a big plus there. LE trim level and up is gonna add a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. And that's the little car icons found in the side mirror so you don't go turning into anybody in your blind spot. And then limited and platinum trims are gonna add in addition to that front and rear parking sensors with automatic braking. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.